young and old on there too with but, but six to, buttons. But to do this joint with this button and it's bursting out. Superman. Superman shit. <laughs> <laughs> Peace. Welcome back to 7 p.m. in Brooklyn. I'm Carmelo Anthony here with my co-host. That's right. It's your boy, the Kid Mero, man. This is a Way Sports and Entertainment Originals presented by FanDuel. 7 p.m. We in the hook, man. We got a guest in the house today that y'all definitely know. You know what I'm saying? You got the best hand on game of comedy. You know what I'm saying? Bar none. You feel me? Peabody winning award. You know what I'm saying? If you win a Peabody, bro, that means you wild smart. You know what I'm saying? Don't get it fucked up, okay? He's a former correspondent on The Daily Show. The last one that John Stewart personally hired. That's like being the last phone that Steve Jobs oversaw. You know what I'm saying? You understand? He's a New Yorker, but he doesn't fuck with the New Yorker. You know what I'm saying? His new Netflix special, <laughs> Off With His Head, is premiering October 22nd on Netflix. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Hassan Minaj. Yo, yeah, that's <laughs> a great intro. <answer. laughs> that's a good one, dog. Come on, me. Oh my God. You feel me? Like, Bro, yeah. right down the barrel, Cam 4? Come on, dog. Uh, Impressive. Been doing this. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You've you been, yeah, yeah. you been showing yeah. off. You've been showing off lately, <laughs> man. Melo, this is our back. Nah, I know, this he's been, like, he been incredible on the, on the nah, intros, your intros like, been, He's been showing up. Yeah. But I, I, yeah. I got to jump right into it. Right? What's up? I know you a real 90s NBA fan. Huge. Culture. Huge. NBC. NBA. Lock it back in. Returns. Back. Thoughts. <laughs> Thoughts. I mean, I don't want I don't want the video to get flagged, but <laughs> you know the music, right? Yeah, 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 come on. <laughs> I don't want, want the video to take it down. Okay, <laughs> okay, <laughs> oh, bro. Yeah. Yeah, man. This is, this is like an incredible situation. Yeah. Do, do you still feel that same energy? I, like, you know, it's interesting because the power of nostalgia is real. Like, it's very yeah. real. And when I saw you, especially, you know, you must have felt this. Going into Paris, there was the whole thing of, uh, do people absolutely. still fuck with the Olympics? Absolutely. Do, you know what I mean? And I think after the, the way Team USA balled out, you were in fucking yeah. half of the shit. This stuff, the cut. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> bro, bro. Getty Images is half you. Just like, yo, coaching, you know, bro. Yeah, bro, full coaching. Yeah, that was the style. Yeah, you're in the lower third. There's the Chiron and straight up you. And <laughs> <laughs> just straight up coaching. It's incredible. But... um. But, you know, everybody was saying it's not going to resonate, and mm -hmm. it did. And I think there's something about, for us, our generation, it's crazy because I think we're all yep. late 30s, early 40s, you know, what that era meant and what it, the NBA on NBC basically became, I think it was known for two things. You have your, like, prestige matchup, mm -hmm. so you know oh, you're yeah. going to go there, and then you got the Ahmad Rashad interview. And so there's some, like, iconic, yeah, man. you know what I mean? There's, <laughs> yeah. the, there's the MJ with the glasses on joint, yeah. Coast Atlantic City. Like, that's an iconic interview. There's Atlantic Penny, City, Shaq, Mike is Penny. Nuts. Shaq Penny interview. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> there's also one. People slept on this one. I don't know if you guys seen this one. There's the Pat Riley MJ interview. Mm. Like, Riley interviews MJ. Like, I'm like, Michael, what's your... But he's <sighs> coaching. Like, he's... You know what I mean? That's, how you, that was some That's shit. how you know shit was different. Yeah. 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 They ain't definitely yeah. not doing that now. <laughs> like, yeah, bro, Steve Curry's yeah. not interviewing nobody. You know what I'm saying? What I'm saying? Can you imagine Tibbs interviewing LeBron before the game? It's LeBron. Bro, yeah. yeah. Talk, uh, when you go to the hoop, yeah. bro. Like, yo, ho, you sound like RFK, my guy. Chill out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, obviously, Reggie Miller as a villain figure. Of course. You know what I'm saying? In the 90s yeah. for the Knicks uh, uh, faithful. I just feel like also the internet era that we live in, it's just, it's, Properties have been divided up everywhere. Oh, yeah. And so for there's something to me about it being back at NBC just feels. It's back home. Yeah, you got to bring Costas back. Mm. Oh, yeah. Did you, ever, did you ever do a Costas interview? Mm, yes. You know, Costas Syracuse. Wow. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, we yeah. tapped in. I go back. Yeah. yeah, we go way back. Is that an all-time interview for you? you that is the one of them. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, Costas like, Yeah, man. You know, that's, that's, that's Walter that's, Cronkite yeah. of sports. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. That's a war. I kind of do, man. Yeah. yeah. Once in a lifetime, sit down, interview, yeah. That's dope. That's major. When he did the shit with Pink Eye, bro, that was iconic to me. It's like, yo, you, you got Pink Eye, bro? You still rocking out here? Like, that's dedication. Yeah, dedication. <laughs> yeah. Man. Like, that's like Willis Reed shit, bro. Yeah. Let them back out on the court. Yeah. You know what I mean? To finish the game. Yeah. Your tenure on The Daily Show, like, chronologically lines yes. up with Melo's Knicks tenure. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So, obviously, you know, being a Daily Show out here in these streets popping, celebrity role vibes, you know what I mean? Like, totally. do you have a memorable, like, Melo moment? Or like a, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, I'm a, let me just, yeah. let me just take the segment. Okay, yeah. Let me take the Yo, segment. Let me take Yo, the hold segment. On, hold on, hold on, wait, hit you with the magic. With I, the know, magic. I know this is a, yeah, yeah, hit, <laughs> I know it's 7 p.m. in Brooklyn. Mm. But, you know, Mello, we had a moment, we dapped up. 
off mic. Mero, I don't think you understand who we're sitting with right now. Oh, I know. For, for, for our generation, for our era, <laughs> and being in New York, I think Carmelo Anthony, you got the Statue of Liberty out there. It's a, you know what I mean? It's a historic, iconic moment. But it wasn't just your Knicks run that was iconic. I feel like I just turned 39. There was a moment from the, the moment I graduated, 2003, all the way to, I would say now, that are cemented by, I call them iconic, mellow moments. Mm. But there were some iconic, mellow fashion moments that I think mm. defined the eras. Mm. Um, so we want to just celebrate these moments of mellow fashion. Oh, let's go. Okay. <laughs> And get a okay. little explanation. From, okay, from let's, go. So, let's go. Let's yeah, go. I got, I got a special go. delivery. That's what we doing. I, 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 I promise you're not being served. You're not, you're, not, you're, not, you're not being served. But these I'm are some moments. Here. I'm running. I'm right. being served. And by the way, I'll, I'll let y'all know what my intention is. Whenever you're lucky enough, and you know this, we get to we get to sometimes step into spaces that you would have never dreamt oh, or yeah. imagined. Ooh. So I have this thing in my journal. I always go, hey, I'm not asking you this, but my boys wanted me to ask you mm, this. Okay. And I always have that thing of like, yo, let me, let me carry that with me in whatever room I'm in. Okay. If I ever get to meet Melo, if I ever get to meet the president, all right, my boys back home wanted me to ask you this. Mm, that's fine. Talk to me. I'll talk back. So there's about, <laughs> let's go through the, the, the Melo iconic. These are, these are some iconic fashion moments. Okay. Some of them are explicable. Some of them are inexplicable. Start with number one. Let's go with Baby Mellow. Damn. That's about the yellow Oshkosh Bagash. Oh, yeah. That's I Easter cried, Sunday I cried friend. after that picture, too. Really? Yeah, because I ain't want to sit. I ain't want to take that picture like that. Shout out to Mom. I ain't want to be on a pony. This is a pony. <laughs> <laughs> How old are you? This? Did you want? Maybe like three, four? Yes. I'm like, yeah, probably f- three. Bro, this is an amazing photo. You smile, no, though. You smile, yeah. though. No, no, that was a, no, that picture was yeah. epic. That's an epic This is an epic photo. No, that's an epic This is in, like, mom's has this, yeah? Yeah, that's for it's, sure. It's, in the, it's one of those frames and, that's, you know what I mean? That's yeah. iconic. This is iconic, Oshkosh. Oshkosh. Mellow Oshkosh. yellow. Mellow yellow right there. You should bring right. that back, Oshkosh. Yo. Bring it back. You see it? Hey, you said you want to do a kid's I, line. I said that I want to do a kid's <laughs> line. You could do it. Come on, Oshkosh. 04, 05 was a specific era of, like, style, fashion, et cetera. Bro. Mello, let's talk about this Oak Hill Academy, the cutoff. Mm. Th- there was an era where you would wear the cutoff t shirt. Cutoff t shirt. You would take a Hanes, okay. cut the sleeves off. They don't do this anymore. The headband, talk, to me about, made, talk to me about this era. I made the headband at a mall, at one of the stands at a mall, yeah. like the day before, like, a, like another trip. I went, you know, they had like the little stands in the, in yeah, the mall. Yeah. You, could, yeah, you, you could get stitched at your headbands, yeah. get things stitched yeah. up. And I got Oak Hill put on the headband. And that was the headband that I wore that game. Oh, it was like one of those kiosks. It was just a kiosk. <laughs> just like, oh, wow. oh, let me get Oak Hill on the, on the yellow headband. Why was it that era where um, everybody now kind of has like this whole like, like towards the end of your career, you dressed like you were scuba diving. Mm-hmm. Like you had the <laughs> scuba diving, yeah, bro. <laughs> Arm sleeve, chest, like, bro, yeah. you were. You Protective were, equipment. Protect, yeah, yeah, bro. You were, from the, yeah, Michael, you were yeah. like from the DC comic universe. Like you're just like. Like there's like pads on the ribs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, was it, me, it was fucking me up. But what there. was it about this era where we felt like this is this is pre Under Armour all that shit? What was it about the cutoffs? Why haven't we brought this back? What's your reasoning? I, this I is, I'm, I'm being for real. Does it get heavy when you sweat? Is that out? They starting to bring them back now. Well, you, for for a minute they took out undershirts oh, under no, the undershirts. under the jerseys. Yeah. So they took those out. So you couldn't wear nothing under the jerseys, and then you had to wear like. Compression, like the, yeah. the you know, almost the like the tank top version of a yeah. compression underneath. They, they, that's what you wore. That's what you wore. So then you started seeing people wear the sleeves. Uh huh. Right. I really wore the sleeve because I was really fucked up. Like you were hurt. I was really hurt. I had <laughs> elbows messed up. Like you know, I had chips in my in both elbows gotcha. floating around. So I, if if you hit this elbow, yeah, bursitis is like oh yeah yeah. So oh, like wow. very sensitive. So that's why I had like I had like real uh, pads in my in my elbow pads. Right? Do you remember what T-shirt this was? Because the way it was for me, that had to be an old kill T-shirt. Gotcha. Yeah, it was it had to be an old kill T-shirt. You just you cut it yourself? Yeah, 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 for sure. That's dope. For sure, for sure. You right on the scene, bro. Yeah, yeah. Like, I used to cut the sleeve and wear yeah. headbands. Yeah, it used like, to be like a thing where like, all yeah. right, you get your T-shirt from Nike Outlet, you run it through the whole school year, starts to get a little grimy. Little pit stains. Cut the sleeves right mm-hmm. there. Cut the sleeves off, yeah. And then you can sleeve as a headband. Bye. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> Trying to see where he going at next. All right, bro. 
I feel energy. Mellow. Oh, shit. This, so this <laughs> one's kudos. Yeah. Like I wanna, I wanna trademark this. This mm-hmm. was an amazing moment. Yeah. Let's talk about this, bro. So oh, the boxy boys. Boxy boys. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, look, I, I saw the commercial. The commercial was great. Boxy boys. Bro, way to own Yo, the joke. Listen, yeah. Yo, to own the joke is chef's kiss. But listen. <laughs> I was wild. Where was your I man? Was wild, Where was your young assistant? And, young and old on there too with but, but six to, buttons. But to do this joint with this button and it's bursting out. Superman. Superman shit. <laughs> 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 I was going to say Clark Kent. Yeah, yeah. Clark Kent. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, bro, you're bursting yeah. out. <laughs> the color, the color was spectacular. What was you know this what like saying? though? Like, you know there's always, you, we've had those moments where it's the, it's the big performance. Oh, yeah. yeah. What was, how long did it take you to put that joint together? Well, you tried it on first. You get measured, go yeah. through that whole process. When you put it on, did you feel like this is the one? When I put it on, damn, yeah. <laughs> Lottery. <laughs> Respect. Lottery pick. Respect. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> All right. All right, again. All right. So now the year's 2005. I'm what? I'm 20. Ooh. I think he's probably, he's probably maybe 20, 21. This is an iconic mellow photo. Oh, baby. Ooh. So, that's Mario. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. R&B legend Mario. Ooh, oh words, shit! Yeah. Yes. No, you had the hit out. Yeah. yeah. Nah, that's what yo, you had the hit out. Yo, that Cham was, had that run, boy. He was like the. That was. Uh, you was him, and every, was, every was rap video. Him? Nah, that was the Baltimore Ravens bird. Wow. Okay. Yeah, with the you know I was paying homage back Puerto Rico. This is you know two thousand and five. Beautiful MTV or the, the beach or some shit like that was. <laughs> yeah. it, was it was one of them shows out in San Diego so, and all that. I was always mean that. So what? Where did all these clothes go? Like what? You know what's crazy? I still yeah, like, got that shirt though. The... I still got that. Still oh, you still got, got the Puerto Rico? Shirt? Yeah, I still got that Puerto Rico shirt. I'm That's a amazing. hoarder, so I, I still got That's that. That's amazing. The forces. You still got these? They probably fucked up by now. Wow. Put some miles on them. Yeah, album. they got miles on them. You still got the watch? Nah, but my I my uh I want to say either my best friend got the watch or my brother got the watch. Okay. Do you want you want to know why I'm asking these questions? There's certain photos that I have mm-hmm. where like I'll get roasted and be like, how'd y'all dress this way? And I'll be like, how dare you disrespect the bread elevens that I got in 2001 at the Christmas release. Like yeah. there's certain pieces that you have for yeah, in your yeah. in your closet. But that was that a, are, that that was a style timeless. like Knickerbockers, you know, mm-hmm. that was a little real Baltimore style. Yeah. I was heavy B more. <laughs> you see, hence the Air Force One. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, 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 Ore, the Oreo Air Force One. Yeah, yeah. Oh, was Bal- that a Baltimore thing? Yeah, the Baltimore gotcha. Ravens chain. You gotcha. know what I'm saying? That was, that was B more dog. All right. It's 2008 All Star Weekend right here. So, how are we feeling about the fedora? I was just a hack. I'm a hack guy. So oh, it was, yeah. Just, you oh, know it was, yeah. oh, it was interesting. Bro. Yeah, no, this yeah. Is, this is, yeah. I ain't really know. See, this was an interesting time because I ain't really know if I was ready to hit that curve of like fast dressing up and shit for the games. But yeah. then it was like, you know, now I'm an all star now, so I got to still find my own swag. To this. But but you felt like this was a moment. All-Star yeah, that was a moment. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah you that was a moment a, for yeah. sure. That was a moment. Young, that's that's young mellow right Yo. there. If you if you show Mira, me that how you picture, feel about the outfit? Look, if you show me that picture and was like, yo, Melo can sing, I'd be like, yo, he could definitely sing. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I know did, he can sing. I did look like a little R and B singer yeah, or some shit like that. I'm not gonna lie, this Fly, thing, though, you gotta yeah, think yeah, about no, that. No, no, but listen, hold up. That was, was the hey, swag. Was, no, but listen, this could do damage. R and B singers. Yeah. Trey songs and all them niggas oh, back eight? then. Yeah. That's how they was. And it's Gucci, right? There's a Gucci. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like like goo wop. It's like goo up on the Yo, fedora. 08? You was sh- in 08? 08? Yeah. In 2008, bro, you was smoking them in the club without it. It's leather, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. definitely leather. leather. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, leather peacock. Yeah. Leather peacoat, man. You know what I'm saying? You know what's so funny? <laughs> funny story, Melo. So there's always, every comedian has their leather moment. Have you done the leather moment? Oh, bruh. Bruh. I did, a, I did a varsity for, it wasn't the Apollo. The Apollo, I did a Nike Tech tuxedo. Leather? That's crazy. And sweating. Bullets, bro. I, Eddie Murphy is one of my. It's like I one know, of my. Isn't I know. That, so, yeah. Isn't that you see, a must, though? Like there's in, a rite of passage. Yeah, like in there's the, a rite of passage when you feel like you've leveled, gone to that level. You I have not, to go leather, though, right? That's like I'm, I'm like I'm, yeah, like, I'm bro, that nigga, like, did it. Eddie did it, yeah, man. I, I just yeah. did it, man. Yeah, Eddie did it, man. Like all the, you feel me? Like yeah, I, I think Martin. that's a badge of honor. Like I, you know, yeah. in order in, in order for you to be able to wear all leather while you doing 
stand up and you stand that's up a moment, and yeah. that's a moment like you got to yeah. really own that moment not too many people shit. get a chance to wear all martin leather. lawrence peak leather moment word leather vest kevin hart, hart did, yeah, kevin hart did the yeah. leather that leather was his drink. moment it's a moment yeah. yeah it's a moment it's a moment you have to really feel yourself i've done it i've tried to, i've tried to do it where i put the jacket on the moment i put the pants i got i'm not gonna do this i don't have the confidence for it no nah. nah. you know what it that's is on what, stage that's my on stage i have the confidence but there's a level of like you know what it is man it's it's the way like you're raised when you're Indian, like the flex, you can't go full flex. You can, yeah. You got to dial it back. Yeah. Like but you when, don't be wanting to be like, man, I'm flexing. Like, man, I'm, I'm doing Bro, it. when I saw your watch, I was like, part of me, we're not close like that, but I wanted to be like, hey man, there's people watching this. You got to hide that. <laughs> For real. Like the Indian dad of me was like, yo, that's a, that's a, yeah, you got like that. auto Mars. Yeah, you got that. I go, put that away. Yeah, you got that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's crazy. That's the, you don't grow up with any people like that where they're like third eye. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, Puerto Rican culture, right? Like Latino culture has that of just like the evil eye. Don't like, yo, chill, people. bro. Like, yeah. don't, be, don't, be, don't, be, don't be putting it out there. Don't be putting it out there. Yeah. yeah right. So there's that. That was, what the leather, that's what the leather pants was. It was like, uh, okay. oh, is this your like. Leather pants in real life is crazy. Leather, leather pants, pants on stage? plus the jacket is kind of a moment. But, I, but by the way, I respect it. That's like, like if you have that you, territory. Chris, Kev, like they could. Like that's a costume to me. That's an outfit. Yes. That's a moment. That, yeah. that go, them outfits right there, right. those comedians who yeah, wear Yeah, those are iconic. They go in the Hall of Fame. Like, those outfits Hall of Fame, is yeah. iconic. You take that shit off in the green room. You know, <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? Like, you're not going to get a bite to eat yeah. after the show yeah, yeah, in, the, in the full leather fit. Yeah. For sure. All right. This is my moment. For me, this is where I feel like all of us, we matured. And I feel like Melo dialed it in. Mm. This is a 2015 GQ moment right here. Okay. I feel like, shout out to Mark oh. Anthony Green at GQ. He's not Facts. directing his first film. Facts. This shoot, bro. Yeah. I feel like you got all the Infinity Stones. Yeah, I was like, that, like you, like I feel like when I when I look at the whole yeah. shoot, I was like, at that moment, I was, I, I, that was all of the, 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 the concept and the branding and the strategy all coming together. Oh, like the maturity and to all start that. the, mm. the process. But no, like yo, listen, man, I'm, I'm here. Yeah. Yeah, and I was just like, okay, it's just about business now. We're gonna button it with this one. Okay. I feel like you don't get your flowers in regards to this. Obviously, mellow, iconic athlete, iconic New York Knicks, all time scorer. But there was a moment in 2004 where I feel like you etched yourself in sneaker Ooh, history. I think I know where you're going at 1.5. Talking about the 1.5? Yeah. Yo, yeah. shit. Yeah. The, how many episodes have you guys done of this show? Four. Almost 40. 41. I was gonna say dozens. Almost 40. The fact that y'all have talked about sneakers, fucking Kobe story. You haven't talked about this shoe. Yo, we talked about this shoe. Because this shoe. of what you just said. Indian culture. We don't want to. <laughs> oh, you know, you feel me? Like bro, bro, this, this actually, bro, no, actually, this is, this yeah. is the Indian flex of like, oh, y'all think this is the luxury car. But this yeah. is actually the luxury car. When this, this shoe came out in 2004, yeah. I bro, I actually think. All your shoes were great, but I think the way they designed this, yeah. and tell me if I'm projecting here, I feel like this captured like your style, your charisma, all of it. Yeah, so that, that shoe right it's just there smooth, really bro. like, it really had new, that was like new innovation right there. Like, yeah. That was like new energy moving forward. Like we pushing the Jordan brand, we taking what it was yeah. and we pushing forward. And when you that, first saw it, were you just was. like, cause when I looked at these, I was like, bro, when you're at a restaurant, and they bring out the bread and the butter. They should yeah. put the, these are smooth. Bro. Like we was, I mean, I was this this process <laughs> you know, right here. This was actually an butter, interesting bro. process. Well, smooth. <laughs> look at the look at the like they the lines, the curves. Yeah, bro, I mean, it's a beautiful shoe. You know, Objectively, the, the, it's a Dwayne, beautiful Dwayne shoe. Dwayne Edwards, man, but we was really beautiful shoe. We really was locked in right there because we really wanted to bring all the essence of the mellow world at that point in time and put that into an action. Was, was the Mellow 1.5 a, like a, a shoe? That was clean. That yeah, was a five, 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 It was a moment. Like, those are clean as fuck. And it's, and, like, it's, and it's crazy. I don't know if you, you don't know it when you're living through it, when you're having a moment, but I'm just telling you, yeah. at that time, there was like the Holy Trinity, right? Like, you had Jordan people, Nike people, Adidas people, and there was no kind of break in that. No. Nah. You know nah. what I mean? If, you, if you're into Chucks, you're into Ch Like, you know what I'm saying? This shoe coming out, I, yeah. like, at school, on the it was in rotation. Yeah, it broke the mold. Which is dope. It broke the I, I, Honestly, it's, it's interesting that you brought that up because yeah. it's not something that I actually ever thought about. I just, I knew the energy that it was creating. I knew, you know, what it was doing, but I never really reflected on like, damn, what, where does this shoe sit at, sit at 
as far as culture. I never, I never. Because I've seen videos where you never pull it out and I be never like, really, yeah. I never really got a chance to reflect on it. Like, you know, individually, like, just take this. I yeah. reflect on it from a standpoint of this was my first shoe. This mm -hmm. was like my coming out party. This this kicked everything off, but I never reflected. But on all like, of it too, bro. The one point five. The fact it was called like one point five. Like, but that was like that was a new that was a new strategy. Yeah, because it's like MJ already got the the ones uh, and the twos. Two, and yeah, 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 so yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. I'm, I'm like the new young kind of connector. I'm gonna be the point five athlete, right? Yeah. So we are gonna take the those as the ones and the twos put together. One point five. Yeah. Bro, so we I was like the hybrid. But it, but, but it worked. But it worked. But Absolutely. sometimes when they when they go, yeah, yeah, this is the three series. Yeah. This wasn't the three series. No, that was a point five series. Yeah, yeah, but this is everything. You know what I'm saying? When yeah. you know, people are like, oh, I'll get the M5, the M3. Oh, you get a three series. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, and it's also, it, it's it, also it, was, it was a standalone. In, yeah. So it was it was inspired, you know, in the sense of like from a brand status uh, strategy, right? You had little penny with penny, right? You yeah. always yeah. had somebody else with, you know yeah. what I mean? So Mike had black cat, like you know what I'm saying. It was, yeah, he was. He was. Everybody has something else. So for me, I couldn't make a another new penny, a little penny, a little mellow. I couldn't. I couldn't make. Well, that. I'm gonna stop you there, because as comedians, our dream has always been how do you pair with an athlete. So no. there's a Chris Rock little penny moment. That was yes, a moment. Absolutely. Kev Hart had the D Wade moment. Yeah, I had Tommy Davis. You had Tommy Davidson. Let's give it a look. Tommy Davis. Bro, this is a, let's <laughs> get your iconic, reaction. If you right? haven't seen this commercial in a minute. Bro, shout out to Tommy shout Davidson. Shout out to Tommy Davidson, man. Or is he just an athlete with too much talent and not enough experience? Is he known for his super cool or his intense passion? Is he a lover or a fire lobster? Or PB and James the crust cut off? Is he a team leader or just a man? The answer? Yes. <laughs> Yes, sir, bro. The these team, moments, man. like, bro, I like this generation don't understand these moments. Like, these was really iconic moments. Like, the commercials. Is Kyan is Ky watching this? He, I think he's seen. Kyan, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. I don't know if he's seen. Kyan, if you're watching this, bro, you probably use Avid, Final Cut. In comedy, we talk about a layered joke. Mm -hmm. Bro, the layers yeah. that your pops has in this Avid file, yeah. the score was incredible. Tommy Davidson, all-time comedian. Shout out to Tommy Davidson. Legendary. Fucking legendary comic. Hall of Fame. The yin and yang between y'all yes. was phenomenal. You actually got to be straight, man. He's mm -hmm. amazing in it. Score, casting, concept. Mm -hmm. 12 out of 10. That was like real strategic like intentional on like yo we gonna go get somebody that's like nobody's expecting yeah because you gotta think about the comedians at, at that time it was you know, it was who's yeah. who at that point sure. in time, yeah, right yeah. so you know kings of comedy like you know totally. so I, I i couldn't i wasn't gonna go get bernie and go get sad or you whatever know what yeah. i'm saying like for sure those guys was like super the kings of comedy man. yeah not saying that tommy wasn't tommy just brought a different energy and mm -hmm. i think we was trying to offset kind of just me and who I was as an individual, where I was coming from, how yeah. I grew up. And Tommy was just one of those. As soon as he came on the set, it was locked in. We had the script. He like, nah, we gonna improvise this. Like, he like, just go. Incredible. I'm gonna go off of you. Oh, man. And it was a real, like I worked with him a couple times early in my career. Yeah. There was another joint that he did where you guys in the hotel room. Amazing, amazing. That was all course. part of that, yeah. that sequence. That yeah. campaign. But something people don't talk about, which is very similar with Sports and with comedy. Sometimes the muse finds a way. You find yeah. a moment. Like you can't, it's not planned. Mm -hmm. You can't write it out. Like a GM didn't put it together. Something happens. And you're like, bro, I think God walked into the room. Like, I don't know who planned this. Mm -hmm. But, I, but I, when I look at that campaign, I'm like, it was, oh, it was bro, like even campaign, the ad agency man. probably wouldn't have predicted how well it all yeah. translates. And it holds. That's they the might, cool they part. might say like they, they knew that right now. No, nah. yeah, nah. nah, bro. Yeah, yeah, high high nah, 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 nah. You know that? Come on. So so like, fit, but to, your, to your point, like <laughs> the, nah, the nostalgia of, of, of all of that. Like, and the fact that, you know, you could, you could pair those two type of personalities yeah. together. Somebody who's 19, 20 years old coming yeah. to the league with whatever reputation that they have. Then you have somebody like Tommy who's just legendary in his status 
also been through some shit, also don't give a Total, fuck. Totally. Don't, don't give a fuck, like, yeah. That, that's that's what we were trying to convey. It was beautiful. I, I became a fan. Nah, you just yeah, brought yeah. my shit back. Though, like, I became that. a fan, though. Yeah, okay. that shit, I, I was a kid. You got to understand, that. in that era, too, bro, the Kings, we were on the tail end of our run. Yeah. But 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 we still, C-Web was still there, Baby was still there. But I remember looking at him and be like, I was at the Art and Fair Mall and be like, yo, am I a Mellow fan? Like, low-key, am I? Am I? Yeah. Because it's, it's religious, bro. Yeah. For us, growing up in Northern California, yeah, yeah, we don't definitely. have a lot. Mm-hmm. And I, and, I, and I hear the Sacramento slander all the time. Yeah. Why the fuck would anyone want to live here? Why would you want to, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So what, what Mike Bibby was, what Chris Webber, mm-hmm. Peja, Vladi, right. Bobby Jackson, what all of those guys represent to us is like, now we fuck, like we fuck with the city. Yeah. And the city loves you back. Now, Sac had energy though. Oh, pfft. Sack time had energy. Sack nah, had a lot of energy. Nah, bro. Size 64 font energy, bro. <laughs> yeah, for I real. Think, nah, when you have nothing, yeah. like when you have uh, when you have two malls yeah. and like that's the, the town. Yeah. Yeah, bro. You bring Sack had, yeah. had energy. And the arena fit their, like Arco. Arco was that. Arco fits what Sacramento was. Like it was very small. It was loud as shit. It was it, intimate. Yeah. Rowdy. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Arco is that is that, my man? Yeah. is that the if you don't like that, you don't like NBA basketball. Of course, bro. <laughs> yeah, that's what, yeah, that's yeah, 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 yeah. It's Brent Napier. <laughs> Show some respect, bro. Yo, bro that is so, it hey, was listen, cool. Listen, yeah. hey, you know how you guys have the 7 p.m. in Brooklyn moment? Yeah. I feel like everybody has their chip on their shoulder. Bro. Okay. You know what I mean? I'm sure you felt that my whole career. Baltimore, your whole career. Yeah. Like, hey man. So I feel that way about the Kings. When people are like, oh, how could, how the fuck could you grow up in Sacramento? Motherfucker, you're from Dallas. Oh, what are you talking about? 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 Oh, 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 oh y- y'all got a movie theater? Fire. Y'all got a movie theater in a Jamba Juice and you're a city? Yeah, motherfucker, we got that too. We can be, hey, hey. <laughs> There's there are there are twelve US cities that are like I can't. In New and York, York, Boston, in and out. Y'all got in and out. We in got in and out. out. Yeah, in and out is good. In and out is good. <laughs> then it's a free for all, bro. <laughs> then it's a free for all. But I'm not gonna take slander from someone who's like fucking. <laughs> nah, nah bro. you passionate. You yeah. passionate about yeah. Sack. Yeah. I'm passionate. You, yeah. you, so you still, you still fuck with Sack though. Did Still, you fuck with the yeah, yeah, of Come course. On. Okay, all right. you never yeah. stop. So you feeling better now? I got a good team. Got a good, yeah, good energy going on. I feel better. I got Demar. We got Demar. Shout out to Demar. That's a, that's a and, big, you know, look, we had a little game seven run. That's and a big piece for Sacramento. It's a big piece. Yeah, yeah. A big piece. and hopefully Demar will be that piece because he's played in the post. Well, you know what you're gonna get from him. I mean, he's, right. he's very Correct. consistent on his game and his yeah. spots and what yeah. he's going to do. So you, yeah, you ain't gonna expect anything else other than what he do. I was gonna ask you this as an athlete though. So many times people ask you to, to predict things. Oh, mm-hmm. y'all going to win this year. Yeah. What is something us as fans, as casuals, we don't understand? Because from what my understanding is, is there's a huge, a huge part of the game, yeah. at least in show business, is luck. Yeah. Right place, right time, things, of course, preparation. Mm-hmm. But it's the same thing that with, with making, a, making a postseason run. Yeah. So everything has to align. Like from the front office to the players to the coaches to everything trainers everything workouts yeah. everything it's just a, it's just an energy and the aura yeah and the flow that you know and you okay we we about to make it run then you also have to have the players aligned by themselves right right to have this is where we going at this is what we want to do this is what we're going to accomplish and then you just you go and as you continue to go you, you may fall a couple of times but you go you go and then you go through waves and then you go through waves and you might hit a run. And once you hit that run. But you, you feel it. Bro, you, I you, felt it. Nah, you, like you, in my career, I you felt feel it where I'm like, it's oh, not even me. Now. No, you can see it. As a fan, what a fan don't know is or understand is y'all come to the games. Y'all watch the games. Y'all, you know, now it's on, on social media, right? So y'all follow yeah. the way that y'all follow, the way we follow as fans, right? Yeah. We go from the game. Right? Yeah. We go home late. We got families, kids. Totally. Yeah, get yeah. up in the morning. There's no excuses, but this is this is all happening mm-hmm. while you guys go from game to game, which may be four days in between. Right. Right? Yeah. So you're only seeing us twice. Yeah, yeah. But in those four days, we don't went through every single thing emotionally, physically, mentally that you can possibly go through. Yeah. So by the time you see us in that next game, you still thinking, 
have this concept of what you have from the previous game. Right, right. While we didn't already went past that, we'd already went past that. We we passed yeah. that. You know, we we yeah, down we, the line. We don't went through everything right. we could possibly you watch go through. Next no, show. no, we're watching the pilot. They're you on watch, episode six. Absolutely. Yeah. They're, they're in season so, two. So now you know you're, still, you're, you're yeah. still mad yeah. or complaining about us from from the pilot, and we in episode six <laughs> and seven <laughs> yeah, already. Yeah, yeah, that's the that's the disconnect. So so this is what I'm gonna say. Being a, a a Sacramento Kings fan my entire life. We lost game seven to the Warriors two years ago. Bro, when Monk went off in game six Ooh. and just went out of body on him. Yeah. I'm saying this and look, by all means, check me because I'm, again, I'm just a casual. No, Monk but, is my guy. But I know, but I, <laughs> but I know, guy. but I know this from, um, I know this from show business, from Hollywood. When momentum is on your side, Facts. when destiny is on your side, Facts. you know what I mean? Go. Gotta go. Gotta take go. advantage. With full respect, I feel like the last couple of years of your career, they did you dirty. Yeah. Dirty. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you were catching bad ones that weren't due to you. Mm-hmm. Same thing happens in show business. Oh. Same thing happens when a show gets canceled mm-hmm. or an exec changes. You're like, bro, this ain't me. Yeah. But the, the audience doesn't understand. Absolutely. Oh. Simultaneously, though, you've had runs. Bro, I, I was in New York while you were having runs where I'm like, no disrespect. I'm like, he's getting bags he doesn't deserve. Mm-hmm. But, but. <laughs> But destiny is on his side. So I remember. Let me, let me, I'm not here to pocket watch. I'm not here to pocket watch. But, 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 I'm, but I'm like, I'm saluting you. I'm like, yo, run. Run as fast as you fucking oh, run yeah. to the end zone. Crazy? Dog, I, was... I remember when we lost in game seven. Let's bring it back to Sacramento Kings. We lost in game seven. I'm leaving the arena. Bro, I brought my pops courtside. We're waving the fucking thing. As we're leaving the arena, fans are like, we'll be here next year. And I'm like, you can't guarantee that. Sometimes mm-hmm. well, it just you, happens. You, you can't. I felt it's that impossible. way. It's impossible. That's why, I don't, you know, I, it's like it's hard to be like, oh, who's going to win? Or who's yeah. going to be MVP? I feel like, like it's such a pointless I mean, why, Yeah, just argument. Those, those are for conversations to have and good, good dialogue. But it's hard to say that because everything, things that you went through this season, you're yeah. not going to go through the, the next season. Right. Like it, it may be a change in roster. It may be an assistant coach that changed. You know, something so subtle that people don't think matters. Yeah. Uh, matters. Somebody might be now dealing with a contract this year issue, you know, trying to figure it out. Whereas last year, they didn't have to deal with that issue. Right. So now you think it's contract. Some people may be thinking contract. Some people may be thinking, am I going to sign here? Am I going to leave? You start mm-hmm. looking elsewhere. So it's a lot of shit that goes on right. from year to year. Health plays a part. Right. Right, who you you coming back this year? You may everybody start off healthy. Yeah. Right. So you can't predict injuries. You can't To me, that's the biggest luck factor. Yeah. No, I'm saying, you're like, I mean, as a Knicks fan, you've seen it this year with Mitch. Like, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. He got the situation, he won't be back till December, January, you know what I mean? But going back to that fan experience that you were talking about, you use yeah. the word casual to describe yourself. Yeah, yeah. bro. Civilian. Like <laughs> bro, what, is, civilian. what is that what does that what does that mean to you? You know what I mean? Because in the in the NBA Twitter community, yeah, that's like, a bad connotation. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's not like a good <laughs> thing to call you. So like, casual. I mean? like, All right, let me let me just put it. As this a graffiti way. writer, that's this, me being let, like, let me oh, I'm a way. toy. So y'all are watching this on YouTube, right? It's maybe it's 1080p, maybe you're at work, you got the white headphones in, you got a 360p, you got another tab, right? And you're bouncing between your work and this, right? And I respect that. Fuck your boss. You know what I'm saying? I respect, respect you more if you put it on full screen, dog, <laughs> and put the speakers but on. Here's what I mean by room. Here's what I mean by casual. <laughs> Air cast the shit to Air the fucking camera. camera. <laughs> All right. I'm not here to, like, talk my shit, but, bro, I'm 6'1". I'm 6'1". You stand next to Mello. It's a different... Yeah, bro, you're, you're from the Marvel superhero universe. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Like... Speed, height, power, all of like, he's. So if someone like me who played at the JV level in Davis is talking slick to him, mm-hmm. it's incomprehensible. You're automatically a casual. Yeah, oh, okay, bro. I got it. Bro, you. you're doing calculus BC and yeah. I'm thinking I'm nice because I can do division. No, right, 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 you're like, right. bro, I do math without numbers. I'm with you the when fuck you write. are you talking about? Right? I'm, I'm talking about you theories. Jay, let's bring it in. This is what I'm talking about. Jay, bring it in. I got, number, I got another one for you. Bro. I got another one for you, bro. This is one of my hey. Look, look, look. We all have our favorite mellow moments. One of my favorite moments. <laughs> 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 no, this is your. This is your. I'm following. And let me just say this. 
We've all been done dirty by the media. This is a setup where I'm bringing you. Yeah, this, bro. okay. I yeah. love it. I love it. Right. I like it. I'm following. So listen, what's my favorite me mellow woman? You know, you had that sledgehammer on Paul Millsap and then you just mm -hmm. fuck iconic dunk. Mm -hmm. I think you have a dunk that tops this. This is where you dunked on a casual. For context, this was New Year's Eve. Oh, okay? I already know. My man Mello over here is promoting the M10. All right, now I'm a oh. M1.5 fan, but we're home. It's Christmas. It's the holidays. He's in good spirits. Cayenne's probably like six mm -hmm. at the time. All right? This is the tweet. Go full screen <laughs> with this, Jay. Carmelo Anthony, look at this. All positivity, but it's positive vibes. Happy New Year's Eve, exclamation point. Love it. Good tone. Start the year off right with a pair of pre-release M10s. Mellow giveaways, New Year's Eve dance-off, and the link. Easy. Okay? At underscore Kingsley5. How about you win a ring? You fucking kill me, man. <laughs> Rooting for you all the fucking time, and you always disappoint me. <laughs> 2.45 p.m. By the way, we're home for the holidays, folks. All right? Mello's mom is around. Maybe your sister's in the other room. Fact. Kids are running around. 2.45 p.m. He leaves no civilian casual. I mean, this dude is going. All right. At, at underscore Kingsley 5. I didn't ask for your glazed donut face ass to root for me anyway. That's right. You know what I'm saying? Donut the, face look, ass. Look at the tweet right under there. <laughs> Hashtag never forget. Hashtag never forget. <laughs> On the anniversary. Bro. Yo, listen. Oh, bro, that's you, why you applied you, to that? Uh, yo, yes. I was like, oh, yo, this is a lot. Shit. This is, yo, dog. This is when I was like, I didn't know about so I ain't, I wasn't all like, you know, I didn't know how to oh, yo, utilize that, that yeah. shit. Back. But Meryl responds May 2014th. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy. It's crazy. That's, you just put that in, you just put that in perspective. But 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 cheers, you, mate. Yeah, cheers, man. Hey man. Cheers, mate. Cheers. You know what I'm Listen, man. Good day, mate. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. This guy's yeah, at home, living his life. You know what I mean? Why are you just fucking with you? Know but, yeah, but that's he when I was up like, his yo. and he's like, yo, yo, Mello just said I had a glazed donut ass face. Face. Yes. So but let me tell you something. Oh. <laughs> because listen, what is what does your rep tell you? Your PR people? Listen, yeah, I, don't go, blah, blah, blah. All right. I, I don't give a fuck. Jay, do this in post. And that's why <laughs> this is the, do this in post. Jay, do this in post. <laughs> All right. Here's what y'all need to understand. Okay. Let me just take a moment to basically break this down. But you, you'll get what I'm saying. Okay. Y'all remember when George Bush gave that speech? He was behind the podium. It was George W. Bush. And then that dude in the audience dude was a like, sneaker? yeah, you lie. <laughs> yeah, dude, yeah. Right? And then W dodged it. He's like, but then he hit him with a smile. He kind of like laughed. <laughs> and I was like, oh, he's got that dog in him a little bit. But this was some random dude who threw a shoe at him, right? It takes a lot to break into a press room, get your shoe on tied, wait for the moment. And you lie. Well, I hit him. And I leave with no shoe. Okay. You lie. <laughs> right? Bro, George W. Bush is going to remember that for the rest of his life. Be like, oh, I was at a podium once. And this dude threw a size 11 Chuck Taylor at me. That's the second yeah, story, man. Like, yeah. Yo, but we was yeah. there. Yeah. We was out there in the East. We were in the at George Bush. But, but, <laughs> now, but now, because of social media, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, you could be like, yo, Mero, you want to fuck up Dua Lipa's day? Oh, you, you yeah. could just, Random, bro, yeah. you could yeah. just, you could get into Madonna's head. Yeah. You could, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, it's a man. surreal thing. It's crazy. So, Understore Kingsley 5 mm -hmm. had real estate in your mind for like three minutes. So, it's a surreal, that to me, that's the biggest, so that's what I mean by casual. Yeah. But that's also the biggest difference between when we talk about generations in basketball. Mm -hmm. We don't give the younger generation enough credit. Facts. That like. Yo, 24 7 understore Kingsley Fives. I'm trying to fuck with you. Yeah, that's a fact. 24 7. That's a fact. And so I was going to ask you so my kids are six and four. Uh, Kyan, 17? 17. 17. Okay. In your eyes, is he, is he a boy or is he a man? Because I still see my kids are my babies. I don't, I don't see them yeah, as Yeah, he's, 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 he's still a young, he's a young man, right? Yeah. Now. Still learning. But this is a philosophical question. I'm thinking about how we raise our kids. Mm. And I was like, how do I raise my kids in a world? where memories never fade. Mm -hmm. So like if you had a bad game in middle school or if I got jumped, you know what I mean? In middle school or dunked on in a game. Bro, it's a story. 
Oh yeah. You know what I'm saying? Meryl's like, oh, I remember in South yeah, like, well, no. But yo, it fades. That's mm-hmm. the beauty. Like in life, sometimes a memory fading is is to our benefit. It helps us move on. Mm-hmm. But Cayenne generation, they're like, bro, you put me in a world where from my first booger to my biggest failure, it's all documented in the cloud. And then you put it on the internet for 8 billion people, including Understore Kingsley 5, to comment on. Mm -hmm. And my question is, is how do we coach our kids and how do you coach your son to live in a world where memories never fade? Yeah, man. That's a, that's Damn, a, that was a heavy moment. Yeah, that, 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 no, that no, was. No, but I actually, I, I, like, I for real was no, like. No, that's, that's, a, that's a serious, that's a serious ax as a, as a father. Yeah. Because it, when my, when Kai was seven, but eight, nine, like. Yeah. Yeah, that's when it was, you're talking 10 years ago, it was heavy. You know, it was just starting to. Just, it was, it was just, just starting blooming, to bubble, yeah. right? Yeah. So by the time he get into it, it's a full blossom, right? Mm-hmm. So it's like, as a parent, do you. Do you censor it, right? Do you censor the content? Do you turn all the notifications off? Do you, you know, I think you start them off slow, mm. right? I think you control it. You but know, you but control I'm talking it. about, I'm talking about the mental. Here's, uh, I got, well, t- even, so even, even the mental, because it's, it's going to be a fight yeah. between you and the kid. Yeah, yeah. Because you just in the world of protecting your kid and your, your kids. And this kid is learning this new way of living into this, living in this new generation where yeah. it's technology, it's phones, it's iPads. That's yep. the only thing that they have to look forward to. They don't know anything else. So while you may be telling them another story yeah. about ignore it or whatever it is, yeah, yeah, it's just they 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 on to something else. They they fast, they yeah. speed up. So the mental aspect of that is like walk them through it. You know what I'm saying? In a sense, you got to walk them through. You got to make them understand what this is. So mentally now, when you go look on here, you know what's right from wrong. You know what right. I should be watching, what I shouldn't be watching. So as a mentality, I got to honor that from you as a parent too, right? So it's it's a full circle Bro, the thing I'm battle. struggling with. It's hard with, though. For it's, real, it's very, for real? It's difficult. The biggest difference between me and my pops, where we've had our Simba Mufasa moment, is he gave me a set of tools that I don't think work yes. today. Yeah. But well, he, that's a, that's you know what I'm saying? Like, too. when yeah. he grew up in the 80s, he gave, yeah. the, he, he gave you the, 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 the desktop, the, the, the yeah, Mac, he's, Mac, he's, yeah, shit. Yeah, he's running an MS Dot. And you went on AI. Yeah, it's a whole different situation. And so that was my thing where I'm like, and you can't combine the both, though. You get what I'm saying? You gotta make both sides understand how each other work. But you also understand this comes from this, right? And I think that's the disconnect. Yeah. So I'll tell you this much, bro. Like, I Damn, think bro. I, I, sorry for getting heavy. <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> no. But I'm like, this I'm is, really, these are moments. You yeah. know what I'm saying? These are moments. You so. need that. You need that. Like, uh, bro, as a father of four, uh, yeah. like, I'm telling you, like, it is is more about, it's less about what you are doing, like, to stop them and more about where you're guiding them. You know what I mean? Like, because, like, like you're saying, like, I always moved, like, memories never fade. You know what I mean? Like, I always remember, like, yo, there's certain things that happen to you in life that, yeah. The memory might fade, but something happened, bro. If you fell, you got a scar. You're gonna every time you look at that scar, yeah. you're gonna remember, yo, this is what happened. This is how I got this scar. So, as a father, I always try to kind of like bring that to to anything that I do with my with my kids. And you got four. You right. got four, bro. You know what I mean? Like you, know you, you got different experiences. Yeah. Like it's four it's different personalities. It's you know what I'm saying. One, one of them may not. Look at social media this yeah. way. I got Michelangelo, yeah. Leonardo. I got the small one. I got the doofy one. That's the wild one. part, bro. It's how different they are. You know what I mean? Yeah, my son and they're so different. I'm like, get ready, bro. I was at the same. Get ready, bro. Because you got a you got a young wild. man. I got some, yeah. some grown, and no. you got a. The no, you gotta like chill, bro. You gotta <laughs> so I got an old with a doofy one. Like you gotta chill. <laughs> yeah, bro. They're like the Ninja Turtles. Yeah, they know and they know who's who. Yeah. Donatello know who's Donatello. You know what I mean? Leonardo knows Leonardo. Yeah. You know what I mean? The girls is different. Shot. I think girls is a lot, you know, is a lot different. You know, you can sit and be reasonable with it. You know, oh, you can really walk. Yeah, yeah. my daughter, she really gets it. Yeah. Yeah. That's a yeah, whole other kid in our Yeah, bro. Boys are like, <laughs> slowly and yeah. guide Yeah, yeah man. Remember yeah. the movie Hook? Yeah. They have the Island of Lost Boys. Yeah, like, that's, that's it. The, yeah. 100%. Yo, listen, man. NBA tip-off is around the corner, and you have a chance to win big on FanDuel. It is America's number one sports book. So, Melo, I got a couple of preseason questions that I need just selections, your, your professional expertise. Okay. Because we're getting closer to the season, man. First up, who are you picking 
to be the defensive player of the year. D P O Y. Jaden McDaniels. Ooh, I was gonna say Bam Adebayo, but yo, that's the one right there. Minnesota, like yes, that's a good, good pick. I know a lot of people may not pick that, but I'm going. I might pick him. That's that's my pick. You know what I'm saying? And he be knowing. All right, next one. Who's gonna win Rookie of the Year? Colton Carrington. Colton Carrington from the Wizards. On the Wizards. Yes. Okay. Yes. Even though this guy is him. He knows what he's talking about. You Sometimes. don't need to be an expert on every team to get in on the action, fam. The FanDuel app is easy to use with a wide range of betting options, spreads, player props, over-unders, and getting your winners paid fast. That's right. And if you're new to FanDuel, get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com 7 p.m. to make every moment more this season. Now back to the show. This is a 7 p.m. moment. Yeah, you know I mean, it's the segment we have on the show where it's it's a fork in the road for Hassan. You know what I'm saying? It's like, yo, right. do I go? Do I go this way? Yeah. Do I go this way? But whatever choice you made in that moment, like like you're talking about destiny, like it altered where you are today, or is the reason you are here today? Yeah, I would say uh, 7 p.m. moment. Oh damn! So it's a dark moment. It could be dark. It could be a happy. Or just moment. A, it could like be a, a, life, a like, turning point. A turning yeah, point. Turn so I remember I had this job. So I start comedy. I'm in college. Um, and I'm like, man, this is a gift. Like, I think I'm good at this. Like, I'm really good at this. God gave me this gift. I, should, I can do it. I can really pursue it. And I remember um, in Sa- San Francisco, they had this really beautiful blossoming, blossoming comedy scene. There's certain cities that, like, if, if you're nice, you come out, come up out of there. There's Boston, yep. New York, San Francisco, Austin. Those are kind of like the scenes that produce a lot of great talent. So I'm like, if I want to get really good, I got to get out of Davis. I got to go to San Francisco. I need a day job. Because at the time, you know, comedy, it still to this day pays you only $20 a set, or $50 a set. So you're not going to be able to make rent doing it. So I had a day job and I was working. I was a community manager. I was, I was working tech support. I was working tech support. Yeah. <laughs> at a company. Okay. Right. He was about to freeze so it was, crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. But this is the thing that they do in corporate America where they're just like, you're a community man. You know, they just like give you these bullshit. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're tech yeah. support. Yeah, yeah. You're a sanitation consultant. It's like, I'm yeah, a garbage a technician. Man. Yeah. yeah. I'm, yeah. A yeah, I'm a pharmaceutical tech- representative in my community. You're a drug dealer. Yeah, yeah. Just that's say what, what I do. It is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. So I was, I was, I was tech support. But I'd be at the comedy club and I'd be doing a set and then like in the green room, just like straight up, like answering emails and shit. But I was bad at my job. And I remember um, I got fired. And it was wild. When you get fired from a corporate job, you have to like hand in your laptop to HR. Uh Then they walk you out of the building before you get your severance check. So some dude, just like Peter, is like, hey, let's walk outside. So I felt like I was in a mafia movie, but I'm just in the fucking WeWork. <laughs> so he's walking me outside and I need the money. And he's like, let's go, go to that Pete's Coffee and Tea across the street. He goes, Pete's Coffee and Tea. He's like, here's $3,000. That's your severance. And I just remember looking at it and I'm like, this is all, this is all the money that I have in my Wells Fargo account. Like I got what I've saved up, which is a little bit, and then this. And that was the moment where it's like, my parents aren't with this whole comedy thing. Mm. So I, I'm going out on my own as a man. It's just me. And I'm like, either this works and I pursue this or I fail and I go home. And I think that was one of those, one of the first kind of like moment moments for me to be like, what's inside of you? Right. It was like the truest test. Like you can't call mom. You can't call dad. You're the eldest. You can't call your little sister. She's in middle school. It's just you. Bro, it was terrifying. And I remember that night, I'm with my room. You know, you, you know how it is when you're first job in your 20s, you yep. got like six roommates. And I could just, I felt like I could feel my heart racing. I felt like I was having a heart attack. And I was like, fuck, am I, am I you know, because my pops had a heart attack. So I'm like, am I having a, like a heart attack? You know, I call yeah. a friend. Oh, you can call 911. And I'm like, but if you don't call 911, they'll charge you like $1,100. So it was one of those, you know what I mean? It's yeah, like, no, it's true. Healthcare in America. Yeah, right. But I just remember being like, <laughs> the ambulance fine. Yeah. So expect, you might as yeah. well call a limo. Motherfucker, yeah. call an Uber Black. But I somehow made it through the night. Like I just stayed up all night. And it was this moment of like resolve. Like I was like, okay, 
for better. I'm, I'm doing this. And um, yeah, man, 16 years later, I'm still here, you know? So still here doing yeah. it, you know what I'm saying? Wow. Yeah. Wow. So far, though, we're going to go from that. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. so your new special yes. is being called Off With Their Head. So yes. off, with them, off With They Fucking Head. Yeah. That imagery reminds me of, of, of the targets some comedians have on them. Yeah. Uh, and, and athletes as well. For sure. Um, what are your thoughts on a debate that the comedians uh, can't be funny anymore or Twitter family would come for you, cancel you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cancel culture. All right. This is the, that's a super broad topic, but I'm just be more specific. Let me, let me break it down in a couple of buckets. Let me first say this before we get out of here or whatever. Um, and you must feel this as someone who had a very long, successful career, but when you look at the careers that athletes have now. So I'm going to say this as a comedian. The business of comedy has never been bigger. Mm-hmm. Like the actual dollars and cents of the industry. Bro, let me just give you some perspective. In the 80s and 90s, you could probably list on your hand how many arena comedians there were. Eddie, Chris Rock. Oh, yeah. Less than five. Yeah. The number of comedians today in 2024 that can fill an arena. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like the, the Oklahoma City Thunder fill up an arena. Sebastian Maniscalco fills up an arena. Mm, 100%. You know what I mean? Yeah. I can't even count them. The number of theater acts that are filling up theaters, hundreds probably. Like literally when I book a tour, I'm competing with so many just other comedic acts. So the business of comedy and the people, the way people consume comedy and love comedy, the same way with basketball, the game has grown to a, a place where you got Joker and Giannis, mm-hmm. it's international. Yeah. Bro, there's no, we're, what we're seeing right now is just the beginning of what I think is gonna happen. Like it's gonna get even bigger. We haven't even cracked all of Latin America. We haven't cracked all of Europe. We haven't cracked Asia. Like it's, Booming, right. is is booming, and it's not going to bust. The internet changed all of that. I was about to cool. say, man. Now the second part of it. What about what people are saying on the internet? Understore Kingsley Five. Mm-hmm. That's a part of it now. Yeah. Just just factor that in. Like I like the same way when you know you're playing a game and there's hecklers in the stands. Mm-hmm. They're booing you. They're yelling shit. They got That's part. That's part of the game. So just you got to factor that in. In business, they say you got to pay that VIG. That's a VIG with it now. Mm-hmm. But the upside is also crazy. So that's my macro take on it where I'm like, yo, just zoom out, like have perspective on the whole thing. Like the actual industry itself could not be bigger, could not be better. Man, you know? I, I think you're right, man. I think it's like the, the, the internet kind of democratized shit to a point where it's like, man, like if you're just a funny dude, yes. you don't have to, because the old school way of it, you, you, you know, we know, you know what I'm saying? It's Bro, you like, have a career thanks to it. You know what I mean? Like, you know it's like, mean? yo, you hit some open mics, you go over here, you write for somebody yes. and that's popping. Yes. You know what I mean? Then they tell you about, and then you just work your way up. Now you, you, you pop on, on TikTok, you know what I'm saying? And then you just sell out a 5,000 seater. You know what I mean? And you ain't so never, is that, so is that, those, is that those a disconnect though? Is that a disconnect between between comedians who stand on different type of morals as far as how they got on. So we start talking about careers now. Yeah. Right? Do you think, and this just came to me, do you sure. think that the idea of what a career means for you is totally different than the idea of what a career means to somebody today? Mm. Because when we talk <clears throat> about career, I'm just yeah, yeah. to give you a little bit of context. Yeah. We talk about longevity we talk yeah, about the bro. journey we right. talk yeah. about the grind we talk about going on the chitlin circuit as far as the, and, and sure. yeah, doing yeah. shit that you don't necessarily want to do but yeah. you have to do because you know that yeah. those comedians before me did this yeah do you so, think they have that same mindset today? i think it's two, there's two different things and again i'm sure you probably have had this conversation with your son which is like this there's this thing called fame mm-hmm. that's this amorphous weird thing that chooses you or doesn't choose right. you. Mm-hmm. By the way, this is why I'm sure as an athlete, you must fucking hate the GOAT conversation. You're yeah, like, bro, sure. I'm playing. Yeah, for you sure. don't give a fuck what, what yeah. number I am on your fame, stupid fame, list. Fame is the devil. This fame is this amorphous, yeah. untouchable thing that's like trading Bitcoin. You're like, I don't it's know the, where the it's, fuck it's, it's going to be devil. at today. Yeah. But the devil could also bless you too. For sure. Absolutely. And, and Bitcoin could hit. Absolutely. Shout out to everybody who held. That's but a fact. <laughs> <laughs> but, but this other thing, it's called purpose. Mm-hmm. Like, what is my purpose? And J- Shout out to JJ Reddick. JJ had this amazing moment in his first press conference with the with the Lakers. 
where they go, hey, do you do you think this is going to dispel <laughs> dispel any yeah, dispel narratives? Is crazy. And he goes, he goes, it's crazy. <laughs> dispel, <laughs> dispel, wild, bro. <laughs> it's a wild thing to dispel say. And he goes, hey, I respect your question, but I just want to let you know, I really don't give a fuck. Yeah. And the media ran with that part. Oh, he said the F word. Yeah. I'm like, listen to the tail end. He goes, I want to coach the Lakers. I want to be a great coach. I'm interested in coaching them and maximizing a player's career. Like what that meant to me, where the reason why that hit me here as a, like a comedian, as an artist is like, yo, I want to be a great writer. Yeah. I want to fucking perform on stage. Yeah. I don't care if it's for 10 people. 4,000 people at the Beacon here in New York, 6,500 at the Radio City, or 14,000 at Madison Square Garden. I don't, I want to be a great comic. Mm -hmm. This is my purpose. I want to respect the craft. I want to get great at writing. I want to have great tags. Mm -hmm. I want to make great art that resonates with people. Yeah. I don't give a fuck about your t top 10. Do you have an Instagram carousel? Fuck out of here. I don't give yeah. a fuck. This is my purpose. Mm -hmm. Sorry for being passionate, but I'm yeah. like, that's what no, we a love so that's what a career means to me. Yes. And I'm going to just say this. Like, if you look at the people that I look up to that admire, shout out to Chris Rock, like who's, who's been a huge influence on me and the reason why I got into comedy. Bro, Chris is almost 60 years old. And grinding. So, still doing it. Yeah. And he still has to do, and you know the prep it takes to mm -hmm. be an athlete or a performer. He still does this shit. Yep. Like pen and pad, mm -hmm. working it out. Yep. And what's wild is, He'll still come and spend time with guys like me. And I was talking to my friends. I was like, yo, I'm, we're 38. We're 39 years old. Can you just imagine going up to a 19-year-old and being like, hey, man, what do you think? What are you listening to? Well, you what know do you think about my though? material? Like, yo, the fact that his ego yeah, is willing yeah. to be like, nah, bro, I'm a generational artist. Yeah, that's a fact. I uh, want to be around great artists. I'm secure. And, like, and I'm, I'm just greatness. Yeah. He, he knows where he stands. That's, right. bro, that's crazy. That means yeah. I'm like, yo, this, this guy... He's going to be doing this until he dies. I agree. This is not a hobbyist. This isn't somebody who's in it for clout. Which goes yeah. back to my question. The, the, the idea, yeah. the concept of career and what it takes to build a career, a career, do you think it's a difference? Do you think it's a disconnect in the ideology of what careers are between, say, our generation yeah. and generations before as opposed to today's generation. I think for, for now. And how do we help that yeah, if, if it's yeah. a disconnect? So, so this is the thing I'm thinking about. Even for us, bro, we're not, we're not like Lord Algo beats us. Yeah. <laughs> the algorithm yeah. can fuck with Absolutely. your head, bro. It's wild, bro. You can wake up and just look at the rectangle of sadness and feel bad about mm -hmm. yourself at 801. That's wild, bro. Facts. 801 AM. And I'm you like, can look at 444 and feel good about yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 God, shit is bugged yeah. out here. But, but. I don't know if you feel this way, but I feel like the internet sped up time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So the news cycle got sped up by 100 but it, times. But, but that's Everything. very disillusioning when you're trying to build a career because sometimes training, like, for example, for the special, I was just in clubs doing it for a year. Then I go do it on tour in theaters for like another year, year and a half. Then we shoot it for Netflix. So that's like two, two and a half years yeah. where you got to really be patient and have a process and dial it in and that feeling of like why the fuck would i do all that if i could just make a tiktok and go viral right now yeah that's, go viral that's, right now yeah i think that's the argument like not, not the argument but like the, that would be the banter going by the way jay y'all were trying to book me for this and i was like let me let me finish the tour and let me finish the spec let me do it like yeah but there's always that thing of like hop do it right now you must have felt that when you were in the run of your career Oh, come do this. Come do that. And you're yeah, like, but that was just super locked in when you, yeah. you know what I mean? Like at that yeah. point, it's like, you yeah. know what's, everybody know what's important. Yeah. Know. So we got a new segment we're introducing that's called the Temple. That's like our version of, of Master Class. Okay. You know I'm saying? Because, of course, Chip right here played with the one and only, the GOAT. You know what I'm saying? Air Jordan. You know what I'm saying? Jay one-on-one -on -one lessons. Jay you know Bro. So, and he's passing them down generationally to, to Kai, you know? Yeah. So what is, like, you know, who are those guys for you? Who's your mic that gave you game? And now, who's, who are you passing it down to? Yeah, I would say there's, like, five or six guys that have, like, put me, put me on, on game. And there's, like, little, little things. Like, as you, as you build your career, there's little things. I'll give you an example. Like, I'll, I'll name the names. I'll say Chris Rock, Colin Quinn, John Mulaney. Mike Birbiglia, John Stewart, Trevor Noah, 
and just getting to be around them, mm-hmm. just like, and you, you, you know, this mellow, it, there's the show, but there's the, th- there's the show before the show. For sure. And that's the whole thing. Yeah. And when you're around those people, when I was around them, I realized it was two things that they were like, uh, actually three things. Number one, they write like crazy, bro. You have no idea the volume they write. The legal pads, like yeah. they're just always yeah. writing material. And I was like, oh, that's the thing that's going to change my whole life. Like, this is what's going to retire my parents. This is what's going to put my kids in private school. This is going to make the whole dream happen. Bro, that's your jab. That's, that's this. Mm-hmm. It's mellow, bro. That was your jab and your jumper. Like, this, that changed everybody's life mm-hmm. around you. When I saw all those guys with the yellow pad, it was a game changer. Write and write all the time Mm -hmm. and just make it a part of who you just carry this shit around and make it a part of who you are. And like, you might find a moment. It was, well, I was jotting this down. I was like, yo, the Tommy Davidson things are inspired. Like, let me me send Jay that. Like, you never know. That passing link could open and you could have a great bit could change your life. Yeah. So that was the first thing. So. so No, go ahead. When you like. Yeah, they write like crazy. Talking about writing like crazy because that's, I got into writing as a function of like, because, you know. When you come from like an immigrant background or like, yeah, yeah. you know, you, you ain't got a ton of money. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So you're looking at what you do, your art as your art, yeah. but also as a way out of your situation. Correct. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So your art is your 7 p.m. moment. Right. Like it for real is like, this right. is my way out. This is my way out. So to yeah. me, I was always told coming up, yo, writing is where it's at. Yeah. Writers are the ones that get paid. You know what I mean? Like the guy in front of the camera delivering yeah. the joke. Cool. He's cool. Yeah. But the, the guy that's writing the jokes is, is the guy that's really yeah. popping. And, me, and, and always now ready. let me give you the second one. All right. So, so this is just a, to dispel it. Bro, this is crazy. I'm just giving this away for free. It's on just YouTube.com for free. All right. Isn't that crazy? All right. Oh, you got to find your, it. Oh, put your head. <laughs> <laughs> this is for a while. All right. So you hear writing. You're like, damn, like, how's my penmanship? But when, when you're around different guys, some guys, like, it's just like with music. You just use a voice recorder. Oh, yeah. Like, like you don't have to be Stephen King and write it. No, nah, you had the little record. pad. Yeah. I'm like, I got the notepad shit and iPhone. Yeah, I'm just, just like, yo. Just send yourself a voice memo. Mm-hmm. Like, just be like free consciousness. And then now there's apps that'll just transcribe it for you. So there's that. But here's the other part of it. It's not just like, let me go. It's not like going to the gym and let me just take these jumpers. There's spots, right, mm-hmm. that you got to go. You got to dial it in. The other part of it, like this was the whole thing, and shout out to comedian Mike Lawrence who, who taught me this and John Stewart who taught me this. This whole game is POV. Mm. What is your perspective? Mm-hmm. Like this, this shit is a commodity. This is all available. You could buy all this. It's his POV. It's your POV. That's the whole game changer. If you dial in POV, bro, you could do that in the back of an Uber. Mm-hmm. You could do that in the back of a green room. But once you unlock POV, it's game over. Yeah. And it's my perspective that makes me who I am yeah. and makes me unique. And it's Kev's perspective and it's Trevor's perspective and it's John's. It's what is your perspective? And I think a lot of times people are like, what's going to resonate? What's yeah. going to work? It's like, fuck all yeah. that. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? What's my take on this? Yeah. What, 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 what's my perspective? <laughs> but like, I'll give you an example. Like I was, I was watching the show and I was like, damn, I, I was meaning to ask you. I was like, yo, mellow, just like the 1.5s when I, when I was like, it's buttery. Bro, you are naturally charismatic. Like, you're naturally smooth. You're not a goober. No, I'm no, con- no, definitely not a goober. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not. Bro, I'm a goober. I'm kidding, man. No, I'm not I am. But you know what I mean? Like, 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 I was like, yo, he's effort. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah bro, you're, you're an orthodontist dream. Like, yeah. the smile is perfect. The fashion is perfect. You know what I mean? That's your strength. And I was like, how you dial in your perspective and reflect that to the world is the whole thing. Yeah. POV? POV. It's all POV. POV. You do those two things, I mean, the rest is just like. He just gave us another segment, B. That's right. You know what I'm saying? POV. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We're going to hit you with a different segment. You know what I mean? This is the the number one segment in America because this is the number one show in the motherfucking world. Okay. Okay. And we got Hassan in the house. Listen, this is fuck with it or fuck out of here. Oh, fuck with it or fuck out of here. Okay. Yeah. Are you familiar? Yeah, I'm familiar. Yeah. Okay, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, I'm very familiar. Yeah, 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 pop culture, whatever's going on. I'm very familiar. Yeah, 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 and you fuck with it or you yeah, what's the fuck, fuck out of here. here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So let's go, baby. First one. Uh, oof. Oh, this is spicy. You had a couple uh, digs at Drake in the special. Specifically jokes that echo Kendrick's, uh, Kendrick Lamar's A minor bar. But uh, I want to get a different 
Aubrey take from you. You know what I'm saying? Uh, the Toronto rapper has also been attacked by Kid Latin fans off of his authenticity as it relates to his participation in hip hop. AKA, everybody thinks he's a culture vulture, dog. Everybody knows you love hip hop. You love hip hop. Okay. And you're a brown guy. Yeah. So here it is. Fuck with it or fuck out of here. Foreign born rappers will never be fully accepted in the larger rap landscape, i.e., your Central Seas. In it, mm. you know what I mean. All right, so I'm gonna sit up for this. All right, all right. So, so, so Mello, watch I'm me. Sit. Th- so, I'm this move right here is just called avoiding a land. Yeah, I already know. I, ain't yeah, yeah. I was about to say, I was like, yo, yeah, right you up Cam to a tour and shit. Like, what's going on? Indian dude, stop giving your opinion on hip hop. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, it's not my. You know what, I mean? what are we talking about? Yeah. Yeah. What are we yeah. talking about, dude? You're asking me. Yeah. You're like, oh, Hassan Minhaj, what is your opinion on who should be rapping or not rapping? All right. Well, I'll tell you, number one, not us. No, no. <laughs> well, do you think. All right. Shout out to Hanuman. Hanuman's a great rapper. He's great. But, but you get what I'm saying. Yeah. Do you think. <laughs> But that, you get what I'm saying. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. So do you think that they'll ever be fully accepted? Not, I mean, not necessarily your POV, but like zooming out. Drake? And, and taking a macro look at the I mean, beyond Bro, Drake. this is like, it's already fat. It's not even a debate. He's one of the, what is the most streamed artists of all time? Like, yeah, so yeah, yeah bro. Yeah, 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 that's not even. Drake is Eshton Stone. Yeah, yeah bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stone, I, 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 I got take though. on that, though. Four, Four, yeah. Foreign born rappers will never be fully accepted in large rappers. I I disagree with that. Yeah, I, I say I, I, because fuck out of here. I, maybe I, POV. POV. Yeah. I have a POV. I have a, yeah. a global Perspective. POV. Yeah. yeah, and you see the 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 hip hop industry in other places yeah. around the world. Yeah, right. That they are a lot of times in their region are bigger than the rappers, hip hop artists here, mm-hmm. and they're in our region. Yeah, so. When we come here, I mean, when they come over here and we may not be like, who's that? And this is that. Like, yeah. Nah, they come here for a reason. They already booming over there. They trying to get into this market. Yeah. Whereas we're trying to stay in this market. We ain't trying to get to that market. Most, most people. So when you right. start talking about those rappers who are actually crossing over the, the, the central seas and the, you know, the, like, you said Drake, you mentioned Drake, but Drake not in that class. Drake is something totally but, uh, different. But Drake is already here. He's, he's saying, Drake got a statue. I agree in with pop. what he's saying. And, and you get this when you start traveling the world. Bro. Yeah, it's just a different perspective, just like, man. Yeah, it's it's bro, so like, much bigger than just here. This. Like, we did our we did our job. Like, the forefathers in the hip hop industry. Right. Shut the camera. And the rappers. Africa. And, like, yeah. even the rappers that's out now, like, yeah. it's doing a job. Now the job is to expand it, to globalize it. Like, still yeah. own it, but to globalize it. And that's what we're seeing over there. And because it's, it's a lot of different other places over there, globally, the power, the energy. You, when you start seeing these, these Afrobeat artists and, yeah, you know, oh, they like, yeah, oh, yeah. I know we're talking about hip hop, but that's part of hip hop. Right. Like, but you but what you're seeing, talking about is like, just like with basketball, it's a, it's a living, breathing art yeah, form, bro. But, it's but not you got somebody a, like Burner Boy would come yeah. in. I know he's not a rapper, but he, you know, he yeah. raps sometimes. He do his he thing. Does it. No, no, Bad Bunny. Like, the, like the, those guys are- The genre's expanding. Yeah. All genres are expanding. Those are, st- yeah, we, we talking about, they selling out stadiums. Yeah. Uh, Coming here selling out stadiums yeah. as opposed to us going. There's only a couple artists- Here's what it that's is, That's globally selling stadiums. What he's saying and what I think I'm saying is just fuck out of here with labels. That's uh-huh. it. When you're when you're locking things in and it becomes super rigid, like hip hop is global now, baby. Yeah, so yeah, you it's know. gonna keep everything's gonna keep changing and evolving. And, Yo, yeah. the tree of hip hop branches keep growing, man, and it keeps expanding. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that was like some real like you feel me? PBS hip hop shit. Fuck out of here. <laughs> Fuck out of here. You think? <laughs> Yo, last one. All you right. got friend of the show. You know what I'm saying? Chris Brickley, you know, trainer extraordinaire. Yeah, he published to his Instagram two posts. You know what I mean? He said, "I quote." Mm. NBA fan. Okay. Ben Simmons is back to playing all star talent level basketball. Mm. Big season loading. And Ben Simmons is ready to have a big season. He's, he makes an impact on the court many different ways. Commenters would not have it any of it. You already know how the comments go on it. So right, right, right. Ed Kingsley. Uh, King, Kingsley's underscore. got an opinion. Kingsley got yeah, an opinion. Yeah, he's got an opinion. You know what I'm saying? So the question <laughs> is, fuck with it or fuck out of here. The hype surrounding summer workout videos posted by trainers. This is not, this is not, it's not about Ben. It's about the videos. Bro, I'm going to take this you. as a civilian, pass it to a professional. You mm. tell me. Okay. You see you an know, actual five jumpers in the gym. Yeah. And you're like, yo, can you see? I test. Is can that you like, see yo, it, he's yeah. ready? So... 
it comes down to the caliber of training. Mm. That's that's talking. Somebody like Chris Brickley, who's respected in the industry and in teams and organizations, look at him for what he got to say mm-hmm. and who he's working up. Woj, you know, deals with him. Yeah. Right? These guys deal with the caliber of trainers like that. Right. So if he's saying that Ben Simmons is back, I would believe him in a sense because I understand he's in there with him every single day. So now he's looking at it differently than the way that the average person is looking. He's looking at movement. He's looking at bounce. He's looking at rhythm, flow. Like he's looking at how his, you know, is he is he physically ready? To me, it was all Ben was just phys- like physically. He started breaking down because mentally he was breaking down, mm-hmm. right? And and it's like once this go, your body goes, right? You you stop caring, and it's not not to say he don't care, but you just start thinking differently, and now mm. everything starts to hurt. So, if Brickley is saying that he's back, I don't, I don't, I want to say back. I don't know what back is. You right. know what I mean? But I would love to see Ben Simmons playing at that level that Chris Brickley is talking about. Because when he is dialed in, he is an All Star caliber player. So if he can get back to that, then we we talking about a yeah. It'll be, cool. a it'll, it'll be cool to see like yeah. Zion and Ben. Like ball. Right. That's what I'm saying. So I'm fucking with it because, you know what I mean? I'm going to be contrarian to all your commenters that are hating. You know what I'm saying? I'm fucking with it. Cause, but he like doesn't you know, himself no justice, uh, yeah. though. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want to be, you know, I, I believe in Chris and, and, and his, 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 his eyesight and his knowledge. But Ben, like, God damn, my nigga. Like, you can't. <laughs> Yo, come on. Like, we, we want to support we, we, him. Come on, like, we want to see him out there. You're supposed to be one of the best and you're supposed to be representing yes. our league and you're supposed to be. This person, this caliber of player, like somebody who come from this, but don't you feel? Don't you feel like see you just, that? But you have to just want it, right? It, don't you feel like it's just up to the player? Yeah, it right? comes. It comes yeah. down to the will to want to go through this process, mm. right? You realize that you came in here and then you got cut. Your legs are cut underneath for you quick. So now you never knew how to get back up, right? So now you're trying to go different routes and trying to figure it out. And then now you, you as, a, as a young man, now your body is growing, you, you injuries, you're dealing with a lot of shit. You don't know how to deal with that adversity. So the only thing you know how to do is shut down because now you feel like the whole world is against you. Mm-hmm. Right. right? And you feel like you ain't got to explain shit to nobody because everybody else is want to answer and you ain't got to explain shit to nobody. I don't owe you shit. So I do feel, I, I hope he, I hope Ben is back, man. I don't, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm tired of seeing it. The Kingsleys. <laughs> the Kingsleys. <laughs> Get the fucking yeah. Kingsleys out of here, man. And thank you to Hana. Yo, man. Hey, and it's not even ended, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I want to end with this. Listen, listen. Yo, this is a moment. This is a moment. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call it a moment. All right. I was telling you this before. I think we've had this conversation privately, but I want to tell you this. Um, I always feel like sports and music is always ahead of where comedy in Hollywood is. We actually end up catching up to what the musicians and the athletes do. I think y'all are the first that connect with the people, but then also find and iterate new ways to build fans and change paradigms. Something that, Mello, you guys have done, your generation. I was just doing a quick calculation. This is about giving flowers to the generation before, talking about where we're at and what's to come. Mm -hmm. I want to give you some flowers here real quick. If you think about the number of billionaires that were in the generation before Mello, less than a handful. Mm-hmm. It's, you know, you got Shaq, MJ, Magic, it's not a lot. But if you look at Mello's generation, it's going to be, again, I'm not trying to get the IRS involved, but it's <laughs> quite we're a few. Watching them <laughs> we're not pocket watching them But they're financially. Yeah, but sad. if you look at this generation, there are people, there are two contracts in an S&P 500 position away mm-hmm. from, being a billionaire. from being a billionaire. Yep. What does that mean? What's my point? My point is, is that this generation is also one of the first generations, your generation and the next generation, that's going to flip the biggest thing that matters in sports, music, and Hollywood, leverage. Mm-hmm. With money means you can now be an owner. And for me as like a performer, you as an athlete, the crazy thing is, is that studios would buy us as IP and then sell ads against us. Showtime would sell Doritos ads against mm-hmm. Merrill. Coca-Cola would sell ads against you mm-hmm. playing basketball. And what you did 
with wine, what you're now doing with media, it actually inspired me to also get involved in consumer CPG. Mm. Now I've been told here at 7 p.m. in Brooklyn, y'all have a shot before the show. Yeah. All oh, right. Yeah. Now I don't drink. Shout out to all the Muslims out there. I don't drink. Mm, I love but stand on your dean. I'm the love, bro. Yeah, I'm on my dean. But there's one thing that's very unique in my community, which is having a cup of chai. Like chai. <laughs> um, and I wanted to with y'all. This is my this is my chai that I have called Kolkata chai. Um, and I wanted to have a cup of chai with y'all. Oh, I'm familiar. The toast on that. Kolkata chai. Because because that's a fact. Because to me, tea is about community, family, commiseration, happiness. This was a beautiful moment. No I know doubt. it's been a long time coming. So if we can't get some chai in here, let's, let's toast woo. to that. Yeah. Hey, man, you better you come in every day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, we got motherfucking yeah, yeah, Somali so, yeah. yes. Chai yes. Somali so listen, over here. Listen, cheers, bro. Yo, salute, cheers, my man. Salute. Peace, man. Yeah, thank, yeah, you. thank you, man. Peace. Y'all were a huge inspiration for this. Just, just have it. Yeah, just sip on it, man. Cardamom, spices. Mm. You know what I mean? And I feel you. <sighs> this is phenomenal. How's it hitting? It's great. I feel you when you say, do not call it chai tea. Nah, bro, you're being redundant. You're being redundant. Yeah. You have it here? It's here. Like you bought like to-go boxes and shit? We bought, we, do we bring, do we bring some for the, for the I group? knew y'all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Come yeah. on, man. Yeah. Chai station coming. Mm. So I'm a tea guy. So, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So listen, I'm like, a tea guy. So, so if anyone is interested, you know, sometimes if you have coffee or espresso, it can do a number on you. Yeah. Chai specifically, it's been around for thousands of years. But it, it, it's, it, it's just easier on your stomach. It's kind of like a cleaner. It's like a yerba mate. Yeah, yeah. There's a cleaner kind of. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you. I'm, a, I'm, yeah. I'm really in the tea fields like that. I'm real. That's amazing. Tea guy. That's coming next. Coming yeah. soon. But, but what was interesting, the way you, D. Wade, got into wine, I looked at tea. It's a $16 billion market. 1,000%. Matcha is set to do $6 billion in 2026 alone. But nobody owns RT. Mm -hmm. Like it was a moment where I was like, wait a yeah. second. So let me get this straight. Like Lipton, some other, we're, we're yeah. having some hodgepodge version mm -hmm. of it. But this is the real thing. And there's, there's not an Indian person that owns nope. this? Dark. That reminded me, yeah. seeing you do this reminded me of that episode of The Sopranos where uh -huh. Paulie was in the thing. He's like, Espresso. <laughs> these, these guys, they would yeah, be yeah, nuts. Yeah, yeah. 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 The espresso, the pasta, the pizza, they wouldn't be eating anything. Like, what are we doing here? <laughs> yeah. Nah, this is serious. This is the original, yeah, bro. The so cheers, man. So anyways, listen, man, it's a thing that it, it comes from a place of love. It's mm. authentic. Your grandmother has it. Your mother has it. You have yeah. it with friends. You sit down. You chat. You commiserate. I just, it just felt right. When I saw you pour for Isa, I was like, what's a way I can uh, give to y'all and just have a moment? So from, from my culture to yours, this hey. is like, this is love. It's a love. Hey. Yeah, bro. Yo, man. Thank Kata. you for having me, guys. Thank Kata. you, guys. Kata. 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 Much love, y'all. Yeah. In the house, yeah.